Καλησπέρα σα. Καταρχήν θέλω να ευχαριστήσω. Θέλω να ευχαριστήσω τον Ανέστη και του συνεργάτε του για αυτό το υπέροχο α, α, βράδυ, τον α, κύριο Παπαποστόλου και για τα δικά μου δεδομένα το γεγονό ότι υπάρχει Varian Users Group Meeting στην Ελλάδα είναι big achievement που λένε και οι Αγγλοσάξονες. Οπότε, συγχαρητήρια, παιδιά. Uh, τώρα θα το γυρίσω στα αγγλικά. So, uh, when, when Anestes invited me, uh, I decided to talk about Halcyon, but instead of talking the science of Halcyon, I thought it would be very interesting to go through the clinical development at the time that uh, the um, Halcyon platform was not uh, known to many people. And I will show in my slides that even the term Halcyon was not disclosed to us by Varian. We had a code name for it uh, when we were talking about it. And we found out that Halcyon would be the name of the uh, technology a little bit before the unveiling of the technology um, that I'm going to show. So without further ado, um, this is the original disclaimer that uh, we were presented by uh, Varian uh, when we start talking about Halcyon after it was unveiled. So I thought I'll present this um, for historical reasons. And then I want to uh, mention that this was a collaborative uh, enterprise between the University of Pennsylvania and Varian to develop the Halcyon platform. Uh, we didn't just test the technology, we developed it with Varian from ground up. At that time, Eclipse was uh, the treatment planning uh, software version uh, uh, 15.1, um, ARIA was 15.1, and a, the Halcyon system uh, that was developed was version one. I'll present a little bit the main uh, campus of the University of Pennsylvania. You will see, I'm gonna use my cursor here. You see here that we have the photon side that we uh, house um, brachytherapy with five Linux volts. At the time of the Halcyon development, we had empty volt three we had closed it up with a key entry. Only few people were allowed to go, and you were not allowed to say a word to what you do after you go past the um, uh, 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 door of that vault. And then as you turn the corner and you come down on the left-hand side, we have five proton vaults. They are all scanning beams today, and we have an experimental vault that takes both proton beams and photon beams for uh, basic experiments, uh, physics, radiobiology, and translational medicine. This is just one part of our department in the main campus of the University of Pennsylvania. However, the system of the University of Pennsylvania is fairly large. We have either collaborative or we have purchased different hospitals and or practices, most of them, actually all of them that I have here on the map, in the area of Pennsylvania on the left, and the New Jersey area on the right, they all have radiation oncology departments. If you put everything together, uh, and with all the developments we've done, we have over 50 linear accelerators and uh, a huge number of physicians physicists, dosimetrists, and the whole um, uh, group. It's about 800 people or more for radiation oncology at the University of Pennsylvania. The timeline, I'm gonna go back to Halcyon. The timeline of the clinical development um, was very briefly, uh, 2015, University of Pennsylvania entered in an agreement with Varian to develop the Halcyon platform, only few people knew about it. I found out when I joined the University of Pennsylvania in July 2016. 
the project has started a few months earlier. So when I joined, I was given the leadership of the project as far as physics is concerned without even knowing what the heck that project was about. So I had a briefing with the chair of the department and based on that, then I got training by joining the team that had already started working on the prototype Halcyon on Linux Vault 3 that I showed you on the diagram. The development of Halcyon took from uh, March of 2016 to April 2017. The unveiling to the world happened in May 2017 in Vienna. Few photos. Um, uh, other speakers have shown uh, these photos before. The installation of our first Halcyon was in August of 2017. If you notice here on the left-hand side, this is serial number three. Okay? So we really had one of the first Halcyon. Serial number one, it was the prototype that Varian her headquarters had in it. Serial number two was the University of Pennsylvania prototype. Serial number three is the first clinical Halcyon. We commissioned the clinical Halcyon between June and September 2017 because we wanted to apply all the knowledge we have gotten from the development. Today, you can commission a Halcyon within a week and a half or two max. The first patient was treated in September 21st, 2017 at the University of Pennsylvania. It was a head and neck, very complex case. And then the next day we had five patients and then the third day we had 15 patients. Uh, currently we have uh, a number of Halcyons in our healthcare system. Vault 3 got rid of the Halcyon that we installed then, three days ago, and became again a secret vault I'm not part of the deal. I don't even know what the University of Pennsylvania is going to develop there because I'm doing other things. So they didn't include me for that. So I'm trying to find out what the hell they're doing. <laughs> Very briefly, the overview of the Halcyon at that time. Uh, I also want to mention a couple of things. Uh, I don't know if I had it before. The code name for us, for the Halcyon, was Easton from east, because Pennsylvania, it's on the east United States, we had given the name, the code name Easton. So every time we were talking about Halcyon in our group, we were referring to it as Easton. Of course, we didn't know Halcyon. At that time, other code or uh, allowed disclosure words by Varian was Jolis, straight through Linux, and one more word, we, we were not allowed to describe very de in, in detail how the Linux looked, how it was organized, and how it operated, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna stay too much on this. It's very a quick, a quick browser, but the time that we're developing, there was no KV imaging on Halcyon. It doesn't do couch rotations, and of course, other speakers, they said there is no light and no field uh, ODI. So duration of the um, evaluation was between June 2016 to July 2017 of the uh, clinical halcyon. We commissioned quality assurance, evaluation, treatment planning procedures, clinical procedures. So we developed all that. At the end of that, and after the first day of treatment, the University of Pennsylvania created a training course in the United States for new buyers of Halcyon, they would come over to our department for one week training of everything Halcyon. So we did the commissioning of the beam, beam modeling. Uh, you cannot do beam modeling, but we did beam mo modeling, I'll show you. Uh, we had a big conversation with Arian about it. Uh, we tested the, and, and studied the MV imaging. We did a lot of tests for the MPC to become the first rank um, uh, quality assurance tool uh, of Halcyon and became compulsory. You cannot do anything on Halcyon before you run MPC. And then we developed 
for every treatment site, the policy, the procedure, and the planning method, including how you junction for long fields, all that was done and we start bringing it into the clinic. But first, you need to put the equipment in your room, okay? So when we put the equipment, it was before the desk designer's reference manual was drafted. That's the DDR, the installers know about it, a lot of physicists know about it, is the multi-page thing that has a, a typical diagram of a machine that gives you where the isocenter is and some dimensions of the vault, and then it tells you what the uh, collimator uh, leakage is for shielding, and Halcyon has a beam stopper, and that manual says that it has 0.1% transmission of the primary beam at one meter past the beam stopper. So in my books, when Varian or whoever else says, oh, there is no primary beam on Halcyon, not true. There is 0.1%. And depends upon what's your workload and what are the dimensions of your vault, you need to calculate primary and make sure that the leakage and the patient scatter are larger than the primary. It's not a given that Halcyon does not have a primary beam, okay? However, here, we confirmed all the exposures around Halcyon when we first installed it, and we compared it with what Varian was given us. Commissioning, I'm gonna go very quickly. We didn't know what kind of scanner will go in and how we're gonna set up the scanner. That was up to us to find a way and tell Varian how to implement it. Of course, Varian has a very good group of R&D people that they're working hand in hand. Not to, I didn't tell you, we had two engineers constantly with us. And we had weekly meetings with Varian for two years. When we developed all that, we wrote the first manual that was published that it was a collaboration between the MD Anderson. They got a Halcyon too, not to develop it, but to play with it and make, give feedback to Varian. So Lawrence Court and myself, we decided along with Varian to write a white paper so to be ready for the first users of the, of the technology, how to get started, because there was nothing available. We did all the testing for commissioning. We tested MPC and the and the, and the reproducibility of the MPC for over two years. We tested the MV panel, these are highlights. There was other things that, that, that we did, okay? And we compared it with vari variety of KV imaging and, and other imaging, and then finally, we wrote the first paper in medical physics that puts all our data of three institutions together, comparatively data, as a first publication out for the users of Halcyon. Unfortunately, that showed up in 2019. Treatment planning, we developed for head and neck, cervical, breast, and palliative, different sizes of tumors, different extents, all the policies, procedures, and the plans. We compare them all with TrueBeam, and here is where the modeling comes to play. We, we found out that Halcyon has lower doses outside of the treatment fields that, that you want, much lower than the true beam. And we wanted to know where it's coming from. Is it the speed of the MLCs? Is it the transition, the transmission of the MLCs? Is it the thickness of the MLCs, the geometric characteristic? What is it? Is it the fact that they're staggered? What is it? Well, Varian doesn't let you touch anything. So we took a model of uh, of um, uh, uh, true beam in, in Eclipse, and we changed the parameters, and we forced them to Halcyon. Okay, in our in our in our in our um, uh, planning system, and then we start comparing, and these bar diagrams show you for a head and neck, for example, how much you're getting uh, uh, dose reduction compared to 
uh, the, the various pieces that we tested, MLC speed, leaf MLC speed, transmi transmission, and, and other things. Where this big reduction in dose is coming from? What pieces contribute to it? So we get good plan, uh, quality overall. We have great improvement for head and neck plants if you compare them with, uh, with true beam. Not that true beam plants are bad, but halcyons, they have really much better plants. Um, and, 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 for, and for different uh, 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 body sites as well. And we also studied a lot, a lot of people talk today about how quickly halcyon can treat. So I have some times here for different um, uh, sites, uh, like head and neck and cervical, between true beam, CR means true beam, and halcyon, both for IMRT, fixed beam IMRTs, and VMATs. The, v, the VMATs are two arcs, okay? It's one of them. So you can see a big reduction of the treatment time. So conclusion, Halcyon offer a great promise to uh, a positive impact for clinical practice, for the following fast commissioning, excellent dose agreement, plan quality clinic acceptable plus superior to current standards in many cases, very much reduced treatment times, and we expect that it's gonna be a platform that is gonna last for a long, long time. Thank you very much. These are all the collaborators that I have. <laughs>